In this episode, we talk about how travel can change the world. Hello everybody, you're watching Curious Power and this is episode 4 of The Curious Ones. Today I'm with Lisa. Hello Lisa. Hi, Hi. Well. So basically, she doesn't even know. Uh, one of the charm of this series is that nobody knows what's gonna happen. Even I don't know what's gonna happen. So basically, these are series of videos we produce where we meet we introduce people that we met through this project that mm -hmm. we do. So we try to give value in the audience, to the audience with what you do. For example, we talk about Instagram and how to grow it. Talk about YouTube and how to, you know, uh, make make yourself better in it and stuff like that. So what I just wanna, firstly, we're gonna see uh, how we met each other. We met through a Facebook group called London Small YouTubers. So if you're in London and you have a YouTube channel, definitely join this group because it's very interactive. It's not like subscribe, 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 and then go. It's very interactive. They have even other countries now, I think. Really? Uh, yeah, I think they open USA. I think they open, I think Dublin they have now. I mean, I don't know. Try London Small YouTubers, send them a message. They have, maybe they have your location as well. So we met there. Mm -hmm. We joined for a collaboration video mm -hmm. about traveling. We asked a few questions. We just did it. Okay, so why don't you tell me about... You, you asked the questions, now let me ask some questions. Why don't okay. you tell me about yourself? So I'm Lisa. I'm the founder of Travelers.com. So the whole point is to encourage frequent travelers to travel. So travel made easy. So what I mean by frequent travelers are so you have, remember in your blog, you also write about travelers versus tourists. Mm -hmm. Tourists are people who just, you know, sit by and just let events flow. Yeah. Whereas travelers, it's a bit more planned, a bit more structured. And, you know, before you go, you know what you want to expect, yeah. you know what you want to see, and then you go and experience mm -hmm. it. So it's basically like that, but a bit more often. So frequent travelers are about, you travel about 12 times a year. So on average, about once per month. Okay. And you do this a bit more often. So I've got plenty of friends who, who did that and when I, when I, this is my fifth country now in London. Fifth? Fifth country of living. Okay. Yeah, and when I was living in all the different various countries, I met so many people. And the problem about frequent traveling is that it's very difficult to find quality information. So you have TripAdvisor, but mm -hmm. that's very tourist oriented. You have a lot of reviews that's, that's very tourist because it's like, oh, today the server is not good. One star. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, well, service, yeah. five star because they gave me a free cake. Mm -hmm. So it's very subjective. It's good because it's, you know, it's an overall thing, you get a, a rough gauge, but it's too subjective to tourists. So you're saying you go there, you live in that area, you go multiple places in that restaurant specific, and then you get a better review of it. No, 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 no. So um, it's a more, so basically, what I'm saying is that there's one platform like that, which is a, doing reviews yeah. based on a lot of different individuals which is very tourist-like then you've got a bit if you go to the other end you've got very niche um, websites giving very niche details like how do I how do I maximize my my BA points like my BA Avios points if I fly from here to here with business class and I do a layover here and if I stay in this hotel I will maximize my points and if I spend on this credit card versus the other credit card, I get a lot of points. Okay. So that's the extreme frequent travelers which, where they, they play a lot of points. Okay. But there, is a, there isn't anything in between. As in, I travel a lot, but I want to know where is a good place to go mm -hmm. based on an experienced person who knows how to curate a place. Okay. So that's where I provide all this kind of information and where other people who are frequent travelers can also provide the information. So it's highly curated and verified. Okay. Verified by the by the themselves. travelers, yeah. Okay. But still this thing with the restaurant, you cannot guarantee because you go out there is somebody who has a bad day and is like, oh, here's your food. I mean like True. But the thing about restaurants is not just about the service of one individual. So there's the atmosphere, there's the quality of food, there's the presentation of so food. So the, the, the people from your website, these travelers, mm -hmm. they're gonna look at the whole thing? Yeah, it's a, yes, okay. so it's a more all-rounder than just one single experience. Because their mind is more open, they travel more, their mind is more open and they look yeah. things like... Now this is this happened with Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria, mm -hmm. because I was living in Varna and I didn't want to go to Sofia because it was too big with these two millions and now I live in London, you know. <laughs> Too dirty, too crowded, stuff like that. And I didn't even. I went there. I saw ugh, disgusting. I went back. Mm. But now, six months ago, I visited because I visit so many places. Now I see. I now I see the architecture. Now I see like 
the food you can take there. I mean, it's much more different, and I completely understand that. Okay, so I saw on your website you've been doing this since 14 years old. You started or something? What was it? No, I started this uh, in 2014. So it's four years, the blog. Ah, yeah. I saw something 14 years like. 14 years old? No, no, no. You were like 14, you started to document, or what was it? I know I started in 2014. Okay, anyway, maybe. I'm not so sure. Okay, we're gonna check that after that. Okay, <laughs> so um, you do this for four years. Mm hmm. I saw you have many locations. So, wait, how did you, did you start do, uh, traveling more often before you started, or you started like, okay, I'm gonna start traveling more often, and you started document then, or how did it all start? So, that's a good question because um, it's a mix of both. So since young, my family, we travel a lot. We travel like once or twice um, a year for a bigger trip and just a lot of occasional trips. Um, for example, we drive from Singapore to Thailand. Mm. It's about 18 hours non-stop drive. Mm. And then we do lots of road trips like that. Okay. Yeah, so traveling is, is already in me when I was young. And then I, I moved to Hong Kong when I was 18 or 19. Yeah, but I moved to Hong Kong. That was my first country. That was the second country where I lived. So Singapore to Hong Kong, and that's where I started to meet a lot more, a lot of, of interesting people. Mm. And everyone, everyone has a story to tell. That's yeah. number one. Number two is that every, not just everyone, but every city has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And you don't tell the story of a city by, you you tell a story by exploring, understanding, and learning about the culture and everything behind. So mm -hmm. that fascinated me a lot. And I love writing. Writing is my form of meditation. So when I get very stressed out, I will just sit down, write, and just clear my mind. Mm, that's it, interesting. It helps a lot. So that's where I, that's how I started. When I was living in Hong Kong, I was exploring so many places. I was going. Hong Kong has a lot of mountains. It's so a lot of fun? mountains. Okay. So I go hiking every week. Mm. So when you go and hike, and then you meet different people, and you learn more about the people's country, and then Hong Kong itself as well. So I started writing as I go. People live there in the mountains. Some of them. Some people live in the, the bottom. So the mountains are not like mountains in Bulgaria. No, it's just... How do you know what the mountains in Bulgaria are? This, this like, it's like, because you say you can ski there. So yeah. it's really big mountains and then it was snow and yeah. it's very dense. Okay. But in Hong Kong, it's a bit... Um, I don't even know where to compare in... in so it's yeah. a, like not a high mountain. No, yeah, no we have not similar. like crazy high mountains. Yeah, we have similar. It, the, there's a mountain called Vitoche, it's right next to Sofia, the capital. So you go there, you see the city from the top. Oh, nice. yeah. it's like a one day hike kind of thing? Yeah, you can do. Okay, so a lot of hikes in, in Hong Kong are just like one day hike. Okay. Because other places, it's a couple of days hike. So like really extreme when you have your backpack and sleeping bag and tents kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hong Kong is not like that. Okay. So it's it's more chill hike. So yeah, that, that's where I started writing. And then I moved to the Netherlands. And that's where I met where? Even Maastricht in the south. Okay. What's so, there? Uh, study. So... Uh, it's a very very so I study economics and mm -hmm. international business and there's one of the best um, economics universities in in the world actually. Wow. So Maastricht University. It's a very small town as well. It's beautiful. And then I moved to Vietnam last year to do some work stuff and now I'm I'm here in London. So as I travel and I live in different countries and then I travel more around. There's so many things, so many stories to tell. But how do you get them across to the world? I can keep talking to people individually and tell them, you know, you should go to this place and then this is what you can expect to see, this is the culture you can appreciate. Mm -hmm. But it's so time consuming. I, I need to spread the message further and easier. So I started writing and started mm -hmm. creating this. Okay, and how is it working for you? It's pretty good. I, well, if we talk numbers, I've seen like 15, 20% growth every month since the beginning of this year. Okay. Of, of like readership and stuff like that. and I'm, Spending more to different channels, so it's pretty good, and I love what I do. So it's not a job. But do you do only your website? That's only work you do. No, so that's one of the stuff that I do. The other thing I do is a consultancy. So I help companies to expand to Asia. Okay. Mainly, usually to through uh, Singapore, because it's a it's a great place to start your business. So you consult expand. them in what? Expanding operations. Like international expansion, expanding your operations to, to Singapore. You learned this in the university? Yeah, so okay. I did economics and before that I did international business. So when I was in Vietnam, I was helping the company to expand to Singapore. And I'm done that. I'm done with that, so I came here. Okay, that's nice. So you do consultancy on the website at the same time? 
Yeah. That, that's really nice. Okay. It's everything I, I ever dreamed about, so I'm quite yeah. happy with my decision so far. I saw a lot of destinations on your website. Mm -hmm. Did you write about them all by yourself? Or you had about ninety five percent. So the other ones, did you pay somebody to write them, or you have contributors to the website? I have contributors to the website. That's nice. Yeah, it's it's, really nice. it's good because the the whole idea is that it's it's not about writing. It's it's not so much about the money, but I think it's it's more of spreading a message, spreading a message that spreading one. Spreading your message. Uh, I think the the general message is that traveling can change the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean like spreading your message, what you believe in. But I believe that travel can change the world. Exactly, and that's what your okay. message is, that's what you're sharing. Yeah. yeah. The thing is a lot of people, it's quite lucky that a lot of people believe in this message. So they are very interested to share with, with the world that you, know, you should travel when you can. Okay, so let's talk about this. Why do you think travel can change the world and how? That's interesting. So before I started economics, I did international business. And in international business, it's not it's not just about oh this is business, this is money, dollar cents, and everything. Yeah. But there's a lot of culture behind it. Like why, let's say Canon, Canon in Canon in Asia versus Canon in Europe. The way of promotion is very different mm. because the culture, the people are different. Yes. And that brings down to oh why are people different? You know, there's so many um, mindset, philosophy, culture, experiences, everything is different so it, it intrigues me a lot why why when i say this specific sentence um it means completely different in the netherlands versus in indonesia there was one i, I don't know if it was toyota or ibiza they released a car series with mm -hmm. a specific name where in china was meaning death or something like i don't remember what it was but they stopped it quickly do you know you don't know there was something but, like that yeah i, I heard yeah this is what yeah, exactly it's things being lost in translation mm -hmm. and translation is not just language it's the culture so i speak english and mandarin and you know even just these two languages are already so different and then i did pick up a bit of french and spanish and when you learn a language you learn a culture language is it's a it's something that's alive yes and it just it just blew my mind that people are just so different and it doesn't stop there. It mm -hmm. it expands your mind. It expands your mind to firstly an unlimited possibility of what the world can provide, right? It it allows you to become more mindful about when you meet someone else. Like, why is this person so rude? Maybe that's not rude. Maybe the culture is a bit more straightforward. Where mm -hmm. maybe I come from a culture that's not so straightforward. So mm -hmm. it's not that they're being rude. I just need to be more mindful that there is a difference in culture, and you become more understanding to to people. And I think that ultimately can lead to world peace. Because you start to appreciate people for their differences. And understand their things. And yeah, ways. exactly. Okay. So in your mind, traveling can change the world and make it better because mm -hmm. you open your mind to other cultures and understand their thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. So that's your message. That's my message. Okay. And you spread it through your website. Yes. Okay. And you, you, uh, you have a boyfriend? You travel with him? Yes. So he is doing... Like, he's also doing consultancy but doing blockchain. You know, like blockchain, ICO, block Bitcoin. He's consulting blockchain. Yeah, in that kind of area. Okay. So like doing education and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it gives him a bit of freedom as well to travel. So before that, uh, when I was living in Vietnam, he moved to Vietnam mm -hmm. and like we tried to make it work in Vietnam. Where is he from? Here, yeah, London. Okay. Yeah. But Vietnam is quite difficult. Is For it? what? Because cult difficult to live, I think. Because culturally, it's it's vastly different culturally, economically is different because considering that I live in, I don't want to say first world countries or developed countries but economies which are a bit more stable mm -hmm. whereas Vietnam is like massive growth, it's, it's, it has huge opportunities, opportunities to grow but um, the, the economy is growing much faster than the society mm -hmm. so it's not really catching up okay. so wow. to go there to invest in, in a company or, or you know to, to make your business work there mm -hmm. is super fun and exciting but to live there because culturally and society if you look at society it's, it's slightly backwards so there's still a, a huge um, culture gap I would say com comparing the society so it, it, we decided not to live in Vietnam after a month oh only a month yeah, That's no, I, I was living in, in Vietnam for like three months and then flying back and forth for a year and he moved to Vietnam, like from London, for like a month and we decided no, we, I, we, we, were, we were looking at either Hong Kong or London we decided okay, we just come back to London mm -hmm. yep. Okay, nice, perfect 
Um, is there something else you would like to cover before that? Before we finish? Mm. I don't know. I don't think so. Okay, so there is a practice that whoever is in this series they gets to ask a question of the day. So you can ask whatever you like. That's interesting. That's ah, fun. isn't it? Mm, I like that. Um, and this always gets people unprepared. I was like, what should I ask? This yeah. is something like your plain question, like what yeah. shall I drop? No. If there is one thing you can change, what would it be? Change where? In themselves? Just anything. Try in the world to change or in their neighbors or just anything. Because well the, the the idea behind is number one to have a very broad question where it's up to the person's interpretation. Okay. And then when you understand so that's a good question. So to what extent the change comes? So if I'm talking about let's say I'm gonna change me, or I'm gonna change my past, or I'm gonna change the future, or I'm gonna change my country, or I'm gonna change the bigger world, or I'm gonna change specific aspects of the, the society. It gives you a lot of insight to what the person's mindset is. Mm -hmm. So let's say, oh, I would like to change myself mm -hmm. because I think maybe I am the, the reason, you know, like, okay, you know, Muhammad Gandhi said, if you change yourself, if you want to change the world, you start with yourself. Mm -hmm. So you change yourself. But maybe a person says, oh, I want to change the world. Maybe this person looks at things from a very, very big perspective. Okay. Like, what kind of impact do I want to put? Or if a person change, wants to change, I don't know, I want to change the banking industry. So maybe this person looks at everything from, maybe this person is a banker. So the mind is, is surrounded in the banking world and it gives you a very good insight to what's in their mind. Oh, so you're going to come read the comments and uh, an analyze the people there. Yeah, like, I ah, will. Ah, ah, ah. ah, interesting. Okay. Okay, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.